Leaders from the group of 20 wrapped up their meeting in Cannes, France today with discussions dominated by ways to address the Eurozone crisis. Some items included talk of a financial transaction tax, more funds for the IMF, and measures to protect the rest of the Eurozone from troubled economies such as Greece and Italy. According to Reuters, 12,000 extra police were deployed around the G20 summit to clamp down on dissent. Protesters instead set up what they called an alternative G20 just north in Nice. We're joined on the phone by one of the organizers of the week's events. Nathalie Pere Marsano is the director of the Center for Research and Information for Development, a coalition of NGOs taking a lead in the summit in Nice. Nathalie, welcome to FSRN. Hello. The G20 features a small group of leaders from the world's richest countries. Now, much of the news this week has been taken up with Greece, where a national referendum was to be held on the EU bailout plan, and then the prime minister pulled back from that. But often what's lost is the overall picture here. What issues are important to the protesters there in Nice, and and what are people calling for? Well, we are calling uh, for a a major change in uh, the uh, heads of state uh, decisions that they start taking into account uh, the interests of their populations and just to, to go out of the system uh, which is totally ruled by financial and uh, economical actors and economic actors. So we really want a major change on that. This is the the, the really the, the, the collective uh, uh, word we have uh, been carrying. Uh, since uh, Tuesday, since we started our mobilization. You speak of a a major change. Uh, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has called on G20 leaders to move beyond what he called financial firefighting and create a new social compact for the 21st century that focuses on dignity and decent employment. He said, quote, to get out of this mess, we need a revolution in our thinking. Do you think G20 leaders and the structure as it is now uh, are capable of this? No, unfortunately, we we uh, don't think that the G20 leaders can do that, and that the G20 is, is, would be in itself a space that would uh, allow this major change uh, we're talking about. But still, we want the, these heads of state to uh, hear what we have to say. But we do not think that the dynamic inside the G20 can allow a major change. One of the specific. Uh, measures uh, that has growing support is for the so-called Robin Hood tax, which would levy a small fee on financial institutions, but it could generate billions uh, of dollars. Bill Gates is supporting it and some EU countries. What do groups at the People's Summit think of this tax? Is it is it enough? No, we don't think it's enough. You know, uh, the, 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 the example you give is a really a good example to show how uh, the G20 is something that is uh, turned on itself. They didn't ask uh, the civil society, our movements, to talk with them about what could be uh, the alternatives. They asked Bill Gates. Um, and so the tax uh, you're talking about on transactions is just a little thing uh, that is presented uh, being capable of bringing a little money for development. And we, in the mobilization, we ask for taxes that could uh, try to uh, really regulate financial market, uh, go out of speculation, and really uh, change this financial system into something that is more healthy. So what is being talked about on this uh, tax on transaction is really not enough. In order to get your ideas out there this week, there have been a, a series of events since Tuesday taking place in Nice. How has been the police response to that? What has been the police presence at those events, and, and what, what response and reaction has there been? Yeah, so that's a very important point you, you're talking about. Uh, we have faced uh, many, many, many obstacles to organize a, civ- a citizen and a civil society mobilization in Nice. Up to the end, it has been very, very difficult. And then we have been facing uh, security forces in a, in a, in a, in a way we had, we had never seen. I mean, it was so many uh, security forces in Nice, we couldn't walk. 
uh, without having someone following us or preceding us. You cannot keep uh, us uh, of expressing ourselves up to this point. This is totally unacceptable. Nathalie Pere Marsano is one of the lead organizers for the Alternative G20 Summit wrapping up today in Nice, France. Nathalie, thank you for your time. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure. Participants in Nice also drew attention this week to the offshore tax havens in nearby Monaco. But heading to foreign soil isn't the only way for businesses to avoid taxes. In the United States, a new report has found that 28% of the most profitable companies in the U.S. paid no federal income tax in at least one out of the past three years. And 30 had a negative tax liability, meaning they potentially made money off U.S. taxpayers. The report is from Citizens for Tax Justice and the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy. The companies were able to take advantage of legal corporate tax loopholes, often lowering rates to below what average Americans pay. The 280 companies examined in the report received more than $220 billion in tax subsidies. Ten defense contractors had their overall tax rate drop nearly 50 percent since 2008. The top four industries to benefit, according to the report, were financial services, oil and gas companies, utilities, and telecommunications.